So let's take this logarithm when you're ready. The logarithm of 3 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, that's the right answer. You had a little problem with the steps there, but you came up with the right answer. The key to our trick here is, in order to use this approximation trick, we should start by forgetting about the log and just focusing on the number inside the parentheses. And that was the step that you kind of skipped that made you a little confused. I'm going to start by forgetting about the log, and I'm just going to write down the number 3 times 10 to the negative 6. For a second, I'm going to forget about the log. And then I'm going to compare this to some numbers that are easier to work with. So I'm going to compare this to 10 to the negative 6. And we know this number is bigger than 10 to the negative 6. So you saw that. That's good. And then what's the next power of 10 that's bigger than this? Well, you saw correctly that would be 10 to the negative 5. So you avoided a common mistake. A lot of students would think that they need 10 to the negative 7 here. But no, this is between 10 to the negative 6 and 10 to the negative 5. So that was good. All right, and only now should we take the logarithms. Now we can take the logarithms of everything. Now we take the logarithms of everything. And when I take these logarithms, should I keep the inequalities in the same direction or flip them? Keep them the same. We already saw that x and log of x are directly related. So since this was the smallest number, it should have the smallest logarithm. So you did that as well. All right, and now it's pretty easy to take this log. The log of 10 to the negative 6 is negative 6. And it should be easy to take this log. This log is negative 5. And now we've come up with the answer you came up with. So you came up with the correct answer. The log is between negative 6 and negative 5. That's a good enough approximation your test. So you came up with the right answer here, um, but you did have a little trouble coming up with these thought steps. And again, the, skip, the step that you kind of skipped is that we kind of skipped just writing the numbers without the logs. It helps to start by just writing the numbers without the logs. And this is going to be even more useful when we start taking the P of things in a second. So um, we should start by writing the numbers without the logs, and only then should we take the logs of everything. That, that's going to be the most reliable way to get the right answer without making mistakes. Okay. Um, anyway, you came up with this right answer here that the logarithm is between negative 6 and negative 5.
Okay, ready to continue? Yes. All right. By the way, one thing that's not confusing you, um, uh, which is good that you're seeing, is it turns out that these coefficients here are not having any effect on our approximation. We didn't really use the number 8 when we did this approximation here. Uh, the logarithm really just depends on the power of 10. Um, the number 8 here is not playing a, a very big role. And the number 3 here didn't play a very big role. What really matters is the power of 10 that we're dealing with. So it's good that you're seeing that. Now let's take the logarithm of 7 when you're ready. Or actually, let's back up for a second. Let's start with the logarithm of 537. Let's take the logarithm of 537. That's actually okay. That probably won't make a difference. So that's fine. You can drop that if you want. So you're getting the right answer on all of these. Um, again, and some of, the, some of the steps of your work um, could be a little bit better. So uh, let's go through the steps here. But you're getting the right answer. But it's good to have also the right steps so that we can deal with uh, the most complicated problems. So the first thing you saw was good. Um, we know that we really, in order to work with taking logs, we have to express things as powers of 10. We're not good at taking logs unless we can express things as powers of 10. So you rewrote this in scientific notation. So that was good. We had to rewrite this in scientific notation in terms of a power of 10. Uh, and you, you're right, you don't really, it doesn't really matter what goes after the decimal point. So if you wanted to, you could just approximate this as 5 times 10 squared. I'll leave this in for completeness. All right, and now um, we can compare this. Well, we know this is bigger than 10 squared and less than 10 cubed. And now we can take the log of everything. And again, since we're taking the log, the inequalities don't flip. Now, the step that you kind of skipped was this one, again. It's a good habit to first write down the numbers without the logs, and only then take the logs. The reason that's a good habit is that that's going to make it easier, easier for us to think clearly when we start taking the p of things. OK, so that, that's a technicality, but this is a good step to include here first. All right, and then we saw that the log of 10 squared is 2.
and the log of 10 to the third is 3. So you came up with the exact right answer. Um, we can approximate that this logarithm is between 2 and 3. Okay, that's good. And as usual, we're seeing, it turns out that this coefficient here doesn't really make much difference. It doesn't really matter what this coefficient is. So that's why it was perfectly okay to just approximate this as 5. It doesn't really even matter if this is 5 or 6 or 7. It's just the power of 10 that turned out to make a difference. Okay, so that's good. So the important thing is that you remembered that before we could take the logarithm, we had to re-express this number in scientific notation. It's much easier to take the logarithm of something in scientific notation. So you re-expressed it in scientific notation, so we have a power of 10 to work. That was good.